Laura says, I've forgotten Mishu and Nduna. So that puts us at 13 cubs that we know about. I think that's about it. And Karula is 11 turning 12 this year, if I remember correctly. So that's not a bad run. The majority of those were raised to adulthood. Now, of Karula's offspring that we still see, of course, Shadow and Tandy, Quarantine, and Shivambalan. So we see four out of those 13. And I can't remember what Shivambalan's sister's name was. Could it have been Shivinzi? Shivinzi, yes, there we go. So let's start again there. So we've got Shadow and Tandi. We've got... Oh, no, we've got Shivambalan, Shivinzi. Misha, oh sorry, Misha and Duna were second, then Shivambalan, Shivinzi, then Quarantine, no, am I missing someone here? Then Quarantine, Kunyuma, then a cub that died, and now these two little gems, Hosanna and Shungile. No, no, I've, I've forgotten two somewhere. I think I've forgotten two somewhere. Okay, let's start again. Shadow Tandi, Mishu and Duna, Shivambalan Shivinzi. It must be a quarantine Konuma, a cub that died. So it's 11 cubs. Now, as far as I know, almost all of those cubs have made it to adulthood, which is incredible uh, when your average leopard female in the Sabi Sands has a 70% success rate at rearing cubs to a year old. And the other predator density around here is, is, is immense. I mean, we've got all those lions and gormians and birminghams, lots of hyenas, lots of other leopards as well. Now, talking about cubs making it to adulthood, there's a lot of threats that face them. And as I said, the biggest threat is, of course, nomadic male leopards. And they out of the mortal recorded mortalities, and they make up about 70% of cub death under a year. Now, I've seen some quite strange things eat leopard cubs over the years. And uh, why don't you guys see if you can guess some of the stranger um, mortality reasons for leopard cubs, and we'll keep it to the Sabi Sands. So only ones I've experienced here uh, and nowhere else. 